What is up everyone? I hope you're doing well. So, holy shit, this episode blew me away. I did not expect the big reveal to happen in this episode. I honestly thought that the show was going to carry the big mystery of who the Dragon Reborn is until the last episode, but no, it is revealed here and what a way to reveal it. Besides that, so many other cool things happen, so without any further ado, let's get on with the list. At number 5, I have the Waze and Machin Shin. As Moraine and her party travel through the Waze, Loyal tells them that if they channel the One Power within the Waze, they will attract the attention of Machin Shin. Machin Shin translates to the Black Wind and it lives in the Waze. Later, as Loyal tries to decipher the Guiding Stone, the group takes a break and Iwain hears someone whistling. In episode 2, Matt also heard someone whistling in Shara Logoth and I'm very certain that the whistler is someone that we have met already, but I'll talk about that later. A Trolloc tries to attack the group, but Rand uses the One Power to push it into the bottomless pit. We only learned that Rand was the one that channeled here later in the episode, but I might as well mention it here. It turns out that the Trollocs have been using the ways to travel for some time, and that's how they arrived at the two rivers undetected. The group attracts the attention of Machin Shin, so Moraine decides to go to Faldara instead because it's closer and she tells the group that Machin Shin will speak to them and to not listen to it. As Moraine opens the gate to Faldara, Machin Shin attacks and it does indeed speak to each one of them. It tells them their deepest, darkest thoughts I guess, but Nynaeve doesn't want to hear Machin Shin's bullshit so she uses the one power to make a barrier and this gives Moraine enough time to open the gate and so they manage to escape. Something that I noticed in a rewatch is that we saw the Black Wind speak to everyone except for Loyal. I don't know if this means anything, but if Machin Shin did speak to Loyal, I'm very curious to know what it told him. Also, later in the episode, we see that someone else arrives at Faldara through the ways, and that's this guy. This guy is obviously Padan Fane. Perrin later sees him in the city, and he tells Nynaeve, I'm fairly certain that the mysterious whistler in Shadalogoth and in the ways is him. But I could be wrong. In the book, Pat and Fane is handled it differently, so we'll see. At number 4, I have Faldara. Moraine and her group arrive at the city of Faldara, which is located in the Borderlands. This was one of my most anticipated moments for this episode, because a lot of interesting things happen in this city, and I hope that we get more of it next episode. It is here that we meet one of my favorite characters from the books, and that's this guy, Bloody Uno Nomesta. I'm pretty sure he only got one line in the episode, but not to worry because I'm sure that's going to change. Everyone that Lan meets in the city refers to him as Daishan, and we later find out why that is. Moraine and her group meet with the Lord of Aldara, Lord Agomar, and at first he's kind of hostile towards them because he thinks that Moraine is here to tell him how to defend his city against the Trollocs. But then Moraine tells him that she's here with a warning. She says that the Dark One has begun to use the ways to move his armies and Lord Agomar realizes that this is some serious business so he apologizes. From here Moraine takes the group to a tavern where we meet another of my favorite characters and this takes me to my number 3. At number 3 I have Meeting Min Farshaw. Min is a character that has a very special ability. She's able to see glimpses of the pattern aka the future. So Moraine asks her to tell her what she sees in the four dragon candidates. When Min looks at Perrin, she sees him with yellow eyes and blood running down his chin. After we saw what Perrin did in episode 5, I don't think there's a big mystery here. But then she looks at Rand and she sees him rocking a baby and I honestly have no idea what this means. With the girls, she sees a white flame in a ring of gold. If you've read the books, this is less of a mystery. And finally, Min tells Moraine what she sees in her, 
apparently the Amerlin is going to be Maureen's downfall, and once again, I have no idea what this means. At number 2, I have Lan and Nynaeve's romance. Okay, so, let's be honest. In the book, Lan and Nynaeve's romance comes very early in the book and out of nowhere. It felt very forced, and when you compare it to the TV show, the TV show has done it way better. This romance has been building up since episode 3, and here it finally pays off. Lan goes to say goodbye to his old friend, who is pretty much the closest person he has to a family, and Nynaeve follows him. Lan invites her to have dinner with them, and afterwards, Nynaeve goes to Lan's room, and the two have some sexy time. Then Nynaeve asks why everyone refers to him as Daishan, and Lan finally reveals his backstory. Daishan is a title given to future kings of Malkir, but the nation of Malkir is no more. It was destroyed and taken by the Blight long ago. Lan's family and people were slaughtered, but Lan was smuggled out of the palace and taken to Faldara. This scene was pure perfection, and in my humble opinion, it was done better than in the book. I thought that this moment was going to be the best in this episode, but no, the big reveal happened in this episode. Number 1 is Randall Thor being the Dragon Reborn. In the book, Rand being the Dragon is pretty obvious. Rand is the main character, and almost every chapter is from his point of view, so when the big reveal happened, it wasn't that shocking. Here in the TV series, the dragon's identity was a way bigger mystery, five candidates and all of them having a lot of potential. Seeing Rand putting all the pieces together was so cool. We see a flashback to Winter Knight, specifically to when his father was having a fever dream after the Trolloc attack, and he told Rand about how he found him as a baby on the slopes of Dragonmount, and we actually see this exact moment play out. The cold open to this episode was the best one so far. We see a pregnant Aeol warrior fighting in the Aeol war against a bunch of Ilianers, I'm pretty sure, and she destroys them. This is what an Aeol is capable of. After she kicks their ass, she begins to give birth, and Tamal Thor finds her and helps her deliver the baby. The Aeol warrior dies after giving birth, and Tam is left with the baby. This baby is obviously Randall Thor. Rand then remembers both instances in which he channeled the One Power and also recalls when Machin Shin literally told him that he is the Dragon Reborn. In order to 100% confirm that he is the Dragon Reborn, Rand goes to see Min and he asks her if he is the Dragon Reborn and Min pretty much confirms it. So Rand goes to tell Moraine and the two decide to go to the Eye of the World by themselves. Holy shit everyone, this entire episode was incredible, there was so much. The way the big reveal was handled was amazing, I couldn't believe they were revealing it as it was happening. I can't wait to see the others reacting to Rand being the Dragon Reborn. I know that there's been some big leaks happening around these last two episodes, but I have stayed away from them, so I'm going in blind into the last episode, and I can't wait. And that is it everyone, please stay safe, have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week for the finale.